We have followed the sun to New Jersey as ABC Sports continues to cover the great golf championships of the world. One lies behind us. The U.S. Open played through the rain and the mist of Oakland Hills. The survivor when the weekend was done was Andy North of Wisconsin, playing with the tenacity of a veteran and the determination of a man with something to prove. North escaped from the sand time after time and won his second Open after a seven-year drought. Now it's the women's turn to determine their national champion for 1985 in the U.S. Women's Open, taking place at the Baldus Roll Golf Club in Springfield, New Jersey. Baldus Roll is playing host to a United States Golf Association championship for the 13th time, but for only the second time on the upper course, and what a championship it is. These three women led when the final round began. 24-year-old Kathy Baker was first by a single shot over Nancy Lopez and Judy Clark. It was a very talented group. The attractive Kathy Baker had twice been low amateur in the Open, but she's never won a professional tournament. Now she leads all the rest. Yesterday, after parring every hole in the front nine, she caught fire in the final nine holes, going four under for the day with a 68. She was six under for the championship, a Women's Open 54-hole record. Kathy Baker in the lead. Nancy Lopez is the latter-day queen of women's golf, winner of 32 professional tournaments, including three of the last six she has entered. But one great title has escaped her. This one, she never has won the U.S. Open. Many thought and still think that this at last will be her year. But Judy Clark tied with Nancy after three rounds, one stroke behind Baker. At age 35, Judy has never won a professional tournament. But yesterday, she shot a record seven under par round of 65 to move into a challenging position. Judy Clark flying high in unexplored territory. And there are others too. Only two shots off the pace when the final round began were Vicky Alvarez of Florida and Janet Coles of California. Alvarez is one of the smallest players in the sport. At five feet, one inch, her original ambition was to be the first female jockey. But somebody beat her to that, so she turned to golf and now finds herself in position to win the first tournament of her professional career. Vicky Alvarez, a diminutive dynamo of the fairways. Janet Coles, playing with Lopez yesterday, moved along quietly but steadily in Nancy's shadow. At age 31, she's on the comeback trail after missing half of the 1984 season because of illness. Five women within two strokes and the national championship on the line. ABC Sports and the United States Golf Association invite you to join us for the playing of the final round of the United States Women's Open Golf Championship. Played this year at Baltus Roll Golf Club in Springfield, New Jersey. Well, it's one of those hot, sticky, sultry eastern summer days. The temperature, 90 degrees, humidity, 48%. You can really feel it enveloping you on the fairways today. It's a real pressure cooker for the final round here, and it's already beginning to take its toll. None of the leaders is moving towards better figures on the scoreboard. Each has lost at least one stroke, but the standing generally is still the same. Let's have a look. Because it's Kathy Baker, still not leading by one stroke, but tie now with Judy Clark, those two at five under par. Nancy Lopez has bogey three of the first four holes, now at two under, tie with Vicky Alvarez. And then the others behind them still with at least some chance to win this championship today. And a look at some of the others on the second page of our leaderboards, among them Jan Stevenson and Okamoto of Japan, Pat Bradley and Amy Alcott, former champions. Well, good afternoon. I'm Jim McKay with Dave Marr, former PGA champion, former captain of the United States Ryder Cup team, and uh, it's that simple final round pressure seems to be beginning to take its toll. Well, there's certainly some of that, Jim, but the first six holes on the upper course at Baltus Roll, the players have said all week long, those are the key holes. Now, yesterday when they played, there was very little wind. Today, it's a lot more windy, a lot gustier. They're playing against the wind on those holes, and it's proven not only with the pressure of a U.S. Open, but it's proven to make the course a lot harder. Uh, the only player that's uh, hung in there really is Judy Clark right now. Betsy King got off with four bogeys in the first seven holes. So there's some good players struggling. And Nancy Lopez, yesterday I watched her on the practice tee, couldn't hit a shot, stepped out on the course, and played very well. Today I watched her on the practice tee, she looked like Hogan out there hitting <laughs> balls. Then she goes right out and bogeys three out of the first four holes, as you said. So there's no way to <laughs> figure out this game. I thought Nancy Lopez was the overwhelming favorite to get out there because the other girls don't have the experience that she has. 
All these years, I've been waiting for you to explain it all to me, and you can't work it out yet, huh? <laughs> no, I still it's don't a funny game. It. Let's talk to Rhonda Glenn, our expert on the women's branch of this sport, also reporter for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Rhonda, uh, these are women, obviously, of different personalities. You know them all. Will anybody respond to this better or worse than the others? It's hard to tell at this point. The first nine players on that leaderboard, Jim, have never won the U.S. Open. And I think all of them are getting a little shaky at this point. I think that's one of the reasons we're seeing some of the scores fall backward. An interesting fact, though, uh, that among the top four players, three of them have never even won a tournament of any sort. And that's Kathy Baker, Judy Clark, and Vicki Alvarez. However, I, I must make this note uh, that about eight years ago, Judy Clark was a 13 handicapper, and today she is tied for the lead of the Women's Open, and that shows a lot of intestinal fortitude. She was a 13 handicapper at about, about the age of 28? That's right, and went to Gardner Dickinson, and he started giving her lessons, and here she is. The only thing's for sure is that the issue is still very much in doubt. It is a typical U.S. Open championship. Let's have a look right now at the final gr three groups on the golf course, starting with the third from last. Now, that'll be Janet Coles, who's fading back now, and Betsy King. Just uh, in back of them will come Nancy Lopez and Vicky Alvarez, the queen of the sport and the little one. And then the two who are tied for the lead at the moment, they could battle it out mano a mano the rest of the way, Kathy Baker and Judy Clark. Now, just a matter of seconds ago, Nancy Lopez on the seventh tee. Remember, bogey three of the first four holes. This the par three. Characteristic Lopez swing. Very unusual. Oh, All right. Shot, yeah. All right. Now she's got to get that putter going. She missed short putts on the first two holes to make those bogeys. So it's not really apparently her swing that looks so good in the practice seat this morning that's deserting her, but the putting. Again, a look at it now, that tie for the lead, Clark and Baker, then Lopez lurking, three shots behind along with Alvarez, then Sally Little, who's playing well today, she's one under par actually, Janet Coles and Kathy Morse. So we return now to the live picture. Still the seventh hole, Alvarez and Lopez. Nancy Lopez, whose married name is Knight. Alvarez is Vicky's married name. Judy Rankin has been with that group. Uh, Judy, did you have any observations about the first six or seven holes there? Well, Nancy missed two very short putts in the first two holes. Uh, very uncharacteristic of her. And I would think if anything could rattle Nancy, it would be putting poorly. The other thing of note is that uh, I think on the sixth tee, they were given an official slow play warning. Mm. They were told they were one hole behind and seven minutes out of position. Well, sometimes when you make bogeys and things, it gets you out of position. If you, you know, yesterday, everyone seemed to play so well, and it wasn't as windy, and it, we saw a lot of birdies and a lot of one putts. That does speed your game up. Okay. Okay, no, too much, too much. Greens are faster today. Rhonda Glenn had a bit of a talk with uh, Vicki Alvarez a little bit earlier. Let's check in on that. Do you think it's going to be an intimidating factor to play with Nancy Lopez and in front of the galleries that uh, normally pull so hard for her? Well, I don't think so. Nancy's a very gracious lady, and she's done a lot for our tour, and uh, she's a nice person on top of it. And uh, hopefully the people will be out there and We'll have some good weather for them. Now, they have been warned for slow play. Frank Hannigan, the senior executive director of the USGA, is with us on the tower as usual at the USGA championships. What would be the penalty? Should one be leveled for slow play, Frank? Well, the penalty would be two strokes. Yeah. For it to be invoked, uh, the, the, they have to be timed six or more times, taking more than 45 seconds before they play a stroke. That's a lot that has to happen before the stroke, before the penalty is invoked. Clark on the left for a birdie. Lopez for a birdie. Boy, it pulled up quickly on it, didn't it? Clark now with this putt to take the lead away from Kathy Baker. They're tied right now. No. And we may find they won't drop as often as they did in the third round. This is round number four. 
That wind continues to dry these greens out. Should make them faster, Dave. Make them a lot faster uh, as far as receiving a shot, Jim. Mm -hmm. And the thing about Judy, and, and most golfers know this, any of you that have uh, played a lot of golf, she had a round yesterday with nine birdies, and it seems like you come out the next day, you, you can't buy a birdie. You seem like you used them all up yesterday, which I yeah. hope is not Judy's case. Vicki Alvarez for the par, okay. Smooth little tap in there. Yep. Remains at two under, three off the lead. Tied with Lopez. Her fellow competitor of the day. Those two playing together. And the leaderboard. Clark and Baker still tied. Lopez and Alvarez tied. Three behind. Then Sally Little, Janet Coles, who's dropping back steadily now, and Kathy Morse. There are others. Okamoto. Betsy King has dropped back a lot. Jan Stevenson has lost one there. Pat Bradley and Amy Alcott not quite able to get it going this year the way they did in the years when they won this championship. Look at Patty Sheehan, Alice Miller, who's been the hottest woman on the tour this year, along with uh, Nancy Lopez. Six over par. Jane Blaylock, veteran. Danielle Amakapani, the uh, women's public links champion there at eight over par, along with Kathleen McCarthy. Those are the two amateurs with the best scores. A little battle going on there for yeah. low amateur, too. That's right. A title which uh, Kathy Baker who's now fighting for the overall title, won twice. She was twice low amateur in this. Speaking of whom, here she is. Look at the hole. It's the seventh hole, Jim. Good yep. part three. Well buckered, as you see, in so many Tillinghast courses. 187 yards, but it uh, might play a little shorter because of the elevation. I'm not sure which way the wind is blowing there. Maybe that started left mm, and she going like it. left. She didn't like it. And that's why in the bunker, you mentioned A.W. Tillinghast, the often irascible genius who designed both of the golf courses here. The lower course, on which almost all of the USGA championships that have been tested here have been played, and the upper course, which is being used this time and was used once before in 1936 when Tony Monero won the U.S. Open. Now Kathy Baker. Get a good look at her now. 24 years old. Jim, uh, Kathy Baker is five under par for the par three holes thus far in the tournament. That has been her margin of difference between uh, the leaderboard. How was she before the round today? You talked to her, I know. Uh, I didn't talk to her. She was very well, quiet. Well, I mean, personally. The, uh, she was very quiet today, as was Judy Clark. Well, she has no sign of nerves so far. And uh, there she is. Kathy Baker safely on, and we'll be back live at Baltus Roll. Judy Clark with an extremely difficult shot. Look at that, a downhill lie, Dave, in that bunker. She can't quite decide exactly what to do with it. Very difficult to get it up. Oh, the main thing, Jim, the ball is going to come out low just simply because of the stance. She's got to yeah. get her shoulders on the same plane that, the, that her stance is and to keep her balance now. Uh, the lip there, she knows it's going to come out low and it's going to run. So, just got to be still, and that's a very, very nicely played shot. What a nice shot. Huh. We've all had those, yeah. and you can do yeah. most anything with them. <laughs> Excellent shot, but with a long putt now for the par three. Prize money here, a total of a quarter of a million dollars. Far cry from the last time the Women's Open was played here in 1961. A man who knows all the golf courses of the world, particularly those of this area, that metropolitan New York and New Jersey, is... Jack Whitaker, why don't we hand over to you? Thank you, Jim, very much. There's a prize money, as you see, and Judy Clark, who has been the most steady, she has not given up a single stroke on that very stiff examination that Tillinghast asked on the first six holes into the wind. But here, as they turn with the crosswind, uh, she's trembled just a bit, this long putt for par. Still got to go back to the uh, bunker shot she played, Jack. You, huh. you get those kind of tough lies, and the thing that you must do is be sure that you don't make any more than a bogey. Don't try to get too cute with it and leave it in the bunker or scull it over the green and, and make a five or something because that could really make panic set in. Oh. 
Nice putt. Come on, ball. Oh. Bob Rosberg, what do you think of that par? Well, that was quite a three, Jack, I'll tell you, because as uh, you both said up there uh, in describing the bunker shot, it was a very, very difficult shot. Don't care how it goes in, just go in. Now we're looking at Kathy Baker, and earlier Rhonda talked to her about what Kathy thinks about U.S. Open courses. I think uh, there's a definite characteristic of the open courses that I like. They are challenging, they're tough, but it seems that in the past and also out in the LPGA Tour, courses that are similar to open courses I tend to uh, do better on. Just that they're a challenge and you really have to concentrate and work out there. And she's working here. For the lead, yes! Kathy Baker's concentration paying off. Birdie putt, she takes the lead now at six under, one ahead of Judy Clark. They are both as they were when they started. It's really gonna be something, as uh, producer Chuck Howard was mumbling in our ear there. Oh, we seem to have to do is turn on the cameras this weekend and they catch fire. None of them had played well in the first four or five holes and suddenly birdie putt everywhere. Well, let's get a word about this uh, championship from Jack and Peter Ellis. Thank you very much, Jim. Peter, what are your impressions of this Open so far? Well, uh, this is just a, a personal view. I detect a possible softening in the attitude of the USJ as to how they set their courses up for these championships. They've still selected wonderful golf courses, but they somehow or other are no longer great monsters, not frightening affairs with fairways 18 or 20 yards wide, rough that nobody could get out of. Um, that doesn't mean to say that the courses are a lot easier. They're still magnificent tests of golf, but they're giving everyone a chance to play. The old adage was that we're making the courses difficult to try and identify the best players. They seem to have eased on that a little bit, and I think that's very good because it's rather like asking Daley Thompson to perform miracles in a suit of armor or Sebastian Coe to run a mile in army boots. And I think the resu re results have been very interesting indeed. The men's open at Oakland Hills a couple of weeks ago was not a monstrous course. This is not a monstrous course. It's a superb test. And I think it's an interesting observation, but it's only a personal view. Well, I would agree with most of that, Peter, I think. And I think the women yesterday responded absolutely marvelously to that condition. Yesterday, probably was the best women's golf we've ever seen in an open or anywhere else. It's one of the great days in the history of women's golf. It's a transition year for the women and a transition upward, I think. Oh, exactly. We had the, don't you agree? Yeah, super. We had the marvelous um, uh, performance of Kathy Whitworth and Mickey Wright with the men and the legends in April. We've had the emergence of Alice Miller as a superstar, the return of Nancy Lopez perhaps better than ever, and on the brink, very attractive people like Judy Clark and Kathy <laughs> Baker about to break through. Yesterday was marvelous. I hope today that they will keep up that aggressiveness and shot making that entertained us so much and that we'll have a marvelous finish here today. Here, here. Now let's get back to the golf. And back to the golf we are, Vicky Alvarez. There's our leaderboard at the moment. Kathy Baker regaining the lead by a single stroke from Judy Clark. Nancy Lopez has bogeyed three out of the first four holes, has steadied down. And Vicky Alvarez now has lost two shots, but here she is at the eighth hole. Her third shot going over the green on this par five. Hmm. Well, that grass could affect this shot a little bit, David, hmm? It, it looks <laughs> so good from here, and then when you get ground yeah. level, it looks <laughs> so bad, you know. The good thing is she's looking down at it as we are. And that looks very well played there. No, nope, checked up a little yeah. soon, but not bad out of that, that kind of lie. This was a few moments ago in Nancy Lopez, third shot on this par five eighth hole. And 
she's got to start thinking birdie birdie now to make up those bogeys. And that'll do it for you. A fine shot. Eight and nine, they'll have the wind at their backs a bit. Now we're back live. And Nancy will be attempting to get back one of those bogeys here. Yesterday, ah. she was very aggressive on most of her of her birdie putts there. She left the one short going in at seven, and that was just hit a little tender there. She's not only got to be aggressive in the fairway part of the game, she's got to get back to being aggressive on the green. I think that comes from those missed short putts early on. <laughs> Rhonda, does that happen, do you think? I think so. You lose your nerve a little bit after a while, even Nancy Lopez. But I must say that I was talking to her caddy earlier today, Dee Darden, who is a real veteran out here and has caddied for great players like Beth Daniel and Nancy. And he said, between her earrings, she is ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Vicky for par. And she'll drop another one under now. Five shots off the lead for Vicki Alvarez. Through eight holes here in the final round. So we look at Bambi over there. And friends. Yes, indeed. So, at this moment, Kathy Baker leads the Women's Open by a single shot. Tremendous stuff. And here's Kathy Whitworth. Giants of the game of golf whether it be men or women. 18th hole and oh, 10 over par, nearly got it back to nine. And how many times, I wonder, she gone through that sort of routine. But she's held plenty in her time, winner of more events than, than anybody, beating the great Mickey Wright. Tremendous lady, great player. Still battling away, never won this championship, and it's not going to be her turn this year either. And the years tick by. But she taps that little tiddler in. And warm applause, round of 76 today. Finishes the championship, 10 over par. Now, here we're back with the leaders. Final two ball, Judy Clark. Third shot to the eighth. Escaped with a tremendous par at the last hole. Come down in two out of the bunker and a good pitch here. Nice bounce forward and then it starts to grab a little bit. Turns on the slope. Look at that lovely pitch. Now uh, we're in live to see whether she can finish this off and go to six under par and join Kathy Baker. I think I hear a baby cry. All sorts of little distractions when so much of the world goes quiet and you've got a putt like this at a moment like this, the distractions can be enormous. No, you saw that? That was one of mine. Bit short and a bit quick. And that was a bit sad. Much better stroke on that little one. You notice a lot. That's the stroke she should have had on the other one. Now, this was on videotape. Kathy Baker's third shot. Remember, we saw Judy Clark's lovely pitch. Sadly, she missed the putt, but just watch this. How about that for a sweet shot? Now, here we are back live, seeing whether she can tap this in. And what, what a tremendous boost for her, seeing Ka uh, Judy Clark miss that little putt. Now she has this small putt to take a two-stroke lead. And we may 
early to say, I guess, but we may be seeing a bit of history being made today if this young lady wins. Two strokes it is, dead centre, sweet as a nut. And looking as cute as a cucumber, off she goes, seven under, leading by two. Great, so well, in the mid-30s, was it, 1936, Tony Manero was the unlikely winner here of the, the men's championship on this very course. I wonder whether we're going to see a uh, uh, relatively unknown lady win. Now, here's the ninth, the tee back there, top left. Drive over that lake. Uh, that really doesn't trouble anybody of this caliber, even the, uh, the shortest of hitters, providing they hit the ball properly, should get over that lake. This is the ninth, and Vicky Alvarez who's been dropping shots steadily. Plays her second, and that's much better. Much better. Beautiful shot. Tremendous. That should safely get her back to two under. Sweet shot indeed. Now back to the tee, and there's the view, the player's view. Kathy changed her attire today. She's got slightly longer trou trousers on today. Hottest day, and she's left her air-conditioned trousers off but looking very elegant indeed. Leader by two, the line just to the right of that little bush, just in front of her sun visor there. It's a very good, solid swing. I like the back swing, right in position, cracks through it well, and she looks very calm indeed. That's really a good location today with the pin cut to the left. Uh, Peter, and there's a little wind coming out of the left. You really need it over there. She really does look uh, very good. Well, both of them do. Judy Clark uh, sadly missed that little putt there, Bob, but they both swing the club so well, don't they? Kathy has just played wonderfully. She made a bogey early on, but then came back with a, with a couple of birdies and just going along beautifully. Well, there's another good crack. Good backswing turn. Beautifully positioned, too. Now, you see a very upright stance. She's a tall girl, arms and club all in, almost in a straight line. Head up. Now, straight back and up. Head very still. Now, she goes to the top of the backswing. And a little bit across, but that's pretty good. Now, just watch the downward movement here. The old left heel goes slamming down. That's beautiful there. Club head thrown past the chin. And a nice high follow through, good balance. And uh, now Judy Clark, a little bit more of a Sandra Palmer type of swing, a little brisker, a little narrower, but again, the head very still, starts to turn, left heel comes up, nice position there, then just comes down again, the left heel, knee, right knee goes through, and a very nice, crisp, balanced swing. Up ahead at the green, here's Nancy Lopez. Struggling. And another one has gone. And this hole, only 325 yards, driving a pitch for Nancy. And, well, she's making hard work of it. Kathy Whitworth never managed to win the championship. Who knows what's going to happen to Lopez. She was a red-hot favorite starting out today. But is now six behind. Kathy Baker. And Vicky Alvarez has this little putt for a birdie to take her to two under and put her into second place. Kathy Morse going well. She's one under and she's played ten holes. So a couple of birdies from her, if she could post a good score, could get them all a thinking. Well done, good three. As Jim was saying, it's a very hot day, 90 degrees today, with a, a humidity of 48%. The tension is pretty hot and high. Back down the fairway, Kathy Baker musing over what she's going to play. She's got a good line in, as uh, Bob Rosberg said, for a, a shot into the flag.
Bob, bit hot and sticky out there? Well, the breeze has come up a little, and it's not quite as bad as it was earlier this morning. Uh, in fact, right now, it's a little, it's kind of pleasant out here. There's a little bit of breeze moving. Uh, mo the air's not still and heavy. There's a little bit of movement, is there? A little movement from left to right on this shot. Uh -huh. Right. Another good looking shot. Tell you, she's yeah, really played well. Yeah. She's knocked it down the fairway and on the green. I think what gave her a real boost is to see Lopez go four over par. I think she had to be more worried about Nancy than anybody else. And to see herself get a six shot lead has really pumped her up. She's really played beautifully. Well, there's young Kathy Baker, who's going about her business very, very competently indeed. And elegantly, and another elegant lady here, Judy Clark. Now here's second shot now. She's just got a little pitch, Peter. She had a tremendous drive down there. She's only <coughs> about 60 yards from the green. Mm, excuse me. Uh, it's uh, not uh, very far, as you say, Bob. That's a big drive. She put it 50 yards by Baker, and uh, she drove it about 260 yards in this hole. Well, she played it crisply. Oh, unlucky. Very unlucky. She needed one little bounce forward there, and that could have got very close. That's how it is. The women's open. Well, from here, we'll be headed overseas for the British Open Golf Championship to be contested this coming week on the Royal St. George's Lynx in Sandwich, England. Should be a terrific one. It always is. Kathy Baker, though, with a two-stroke lead here over Judy Clark in the United States Women's Open as they play the last hole of the front nine. Here is Kathy Baker at age 24, not yet on the threshold of fame, but getting closer and closer. Clark made a par. And another good birdie opportunity for Kathy Baker. Quite bold enough, but the par will keep her at seven under, two-stroke lead. You've just joined us. Nancy Lopez is having all kinds of trouble. Shot 40 on the front nine, has dropped down to one under for the championship, six shots behind the leader. Look on videotape from just a moment ago of Vicky Alvarez at two under. She's in third place. Tenth hole, 144 uh, yards long, fine shot. Now, on the same green, this is the live picture of Nancy Lopez. Remember, she's just one under now. Lost four shots to par in the front nine. This could help. From the way she's aimed, it's got to be a big right to left swing. Aimed almost up at the caddy's feet there. Mm. I'm, su I'm surprised she left the the pin in and had the caddy stand there being so close. That I would find that sort of distracting, especially if you had a heavy caddy and put it in his footprints. Be sure and have a light caddy. <laughs> <laughs> picture of concentration. You know, she always calls husband Ray Knight, the baseball player for the Mets, when he's on a road. One night she tried to call him, and she couldn't get him in the middle of the night. Well, what happened is I woke up about 2.30 in the morning, my time, it was in uh, Houston, and he was on the East Coast, so it was 3.30 his time, and I knew by then he should have already called me. Uh, but I knew nothing was going on because his mom and dad were at that, in Atlanta, they were playing in Atlanta. And so um, I wasn't really worried that <laughs> anything bad was happening. But then I got kind of worried because I knew that his mom and dad were there. And I called um, the hotel and I asked for Ray Knight's room and they rang it and nobody answered. So 
Then I waited for the, the guy at the front desk to answer again, and he said, if you're looking for someone uh, that's supposed to be at the ball game, they're still playing. And I said, but it's almost 4 o'clock in the morning. He says, they're going for a record, I think. And uh, that's, that's what happened that night. Sure enough, it was that 19-inning game the Mets had. That's right, with rain delays and everything else, I believe. Yep. Vicki Alvarez made her par. As for her par. All right, but that keeps her still at one under. She'll have to start making a move quite soon here. Six strokes behind leader Kathy Baker. Judy Clark holding in second place. Vicki Alvarez there, Nancy Lopez. The only one, however, who's really making the move is the leader, as you'd expect, Kathy Baker. She's one under for the day now. Good galleries here as we pan across and take you from the green back to the tee. Excellent camera work as always from high overhead. It's a great golfing state here. Yeah, man. Big crowds. Some wonderful golf courses in the state here. <laughs> a lot of them people haven't heard of. You've heard of uh, Plainfield and Pine Valley where the Walker Cup's going to be later on. That's famous throughout the world. Ridgewood. How about, how about those private little spots like Somerset Hills? Oh, things? yes. Somebody say, get up. <clears throat> Where did it finish, Rossi? Short. Uh... It's short in the, in the light. There you uh, go. There you go. Yeah. David, uh, it's a chip of about 30 feet left. What club do you think that might be hitting there today? Well, it looks like it might be a six iron today. It's quite a bit of breeze, and the hole is uphill, the elevated green. Oh, you, you've got to throw the ball up past the hole. Everything, all the trouble is short, although you don't want to put it too far past the hole because it's pretty quick coming down there. Judy Clark. Trailing by two. <clears throat> She's got to get a little more aggressive. I know that uh, she made a par there at Nan, but it was sort of a tentative putt that she left short. Don't have that many opportunities to win an open championship. You've got to be a little bolder, Judy. Opportunity knocks a bit right now. And she's left a considerably short, though, on the putting surface. So it's mano a mano, Baker against Clark for the open championship. We're back at Ball of Straw, final round of the Women's Open, and this is where it begins on the final nine on Sunday afternoon. The leader, Kathy Baker, by two shots. The second shot here at the par three tenth, just short of the green. Didn't sound real crisp, Jack. Didn't it? Not I was bad. Say, it just yeah. sounded just a touch heavy, which happens to you when you're on an upslope a lot of times because you get your weight back on your right foot. You don't keep it as as forward as you need to. You know, you're saying about the putting, David. And I think it's something that high handicap players can identify with because it happens to us too. There are certain days when you just aren't. It's not necessarily aggressiveness. You're not firm enough. And I think even with Kathy Baker on one of her putts there, that she left dead center short. That, uh, but that's accountable, I think, uh, and understandable on the final round of a U.S. Open. For Kathy to be a little tentative is one thing. It's, it's when you're behind, you've got to give yourself a little bit of a chance. That doesn't mean uh, to knock it six feet by no. and say, well, I went for it. <laughs> say, what good is that? He wouldn't have gone in anyhow. Judy Clark. But this is not one that she can take a run at. This is no. a pretty long putt and a big right to left break. What a difference a day makes. She had put it about three feet at nine yesterday and about three feet from the pin here yesterday. On a, en route to that brilliant 65. 
Steady now. All right. Take par here and go quietly. That's right. You, you've got to play the percentage on when you can make, be a little bold on a putt. When you've got it 30, 35 feet away with a big break, that's not any time to be too bold. Just make your th threes never hurt you <laughs> on a golf course, even, <laughs> even at the par three, see? And they add up real low. <laughs> All right, the leader for par. How has she been putting, as a matter of fact, Rossi? Jack, she's been putting beautifully. I think she's got a great stroke. It's, a, it's one of those real long strokes uh, with, a, with a very uh, smooth transition through the ball. It's not one of those jab strokes, and she is held up beautifully. She does something a little different, Bob. She gets the heel of the putter off the ground. The toe is mostly on the ground, the opposite of uh, uh, Oki. No break. That ball didn't move at all, Jack. Sure didn't. Well, that closes it up a bit. Bogey four for the leader to drop her to six. Another thing, Jack, this can mean so much. Now, if Judy makes hers, it'll give her the honor on the next hole. And until Kathy were to mm -hmm. shoot a lower score on a hole, she's going to have the honor. I would like to have that honor and just keep trying to hit as many good shots as I could and just sort of look the other person in the eye and say, how about yeah. those apples? Yeah. Judy for par. Yes. Yeah. She remains at five under as she started. Now, Vicky Alvarez at the 11th fairway. This is a par five, and this will be Vicky's third shot. Now, well, it looked like it might have been even better. <laughs> Starting to play better the last few holes. Brilliant shot in at nine, and a nice putt at 10, and now here we are looking at the 11th hole, par five. And now Nancy Lopez. That's what she has. And she has got to start to move right now. She not only has to move, she has to have a little help from those two out in front, too. Yep. They've got to start coming back her way a little bit. And it did not bite. This is Alice Miller on the home green. Leading money winner in the LPGA Tour. She has had an outstanding year. She's absolutely dominated uh, women's golf this year. Uh, won her first major to Nabisco down ashore. And did, had she already broken the money record for the year? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're still early. Alice Miller has a chance to even break the scoring average, low scoring average for the year and win the Bear Trophy. But uh, there's an interesting little conflict here because Nancy Lopez owns that low scoring average and she said that's one record she wants to hold on to and it's made Nancy play extra hard. And so Nancy's scoring average is also below the record right now. So these players are motivating each other. She's a very nice person, too, isn't she, Ron? Yes, she's a quiet person. She's reserved on the golf course. A lot of people say, well, you ought to have a little more flair on the golf course. But to keep your emotions under control is a real plus when you're playing in competition. Well, the leader is <laughs> solid, dead perfect. Hmm? Yes. There have been no birdies at that 11th hole today, we're told. 
the leaderboard. And again, those people who get it at even par just start to make a surge forward after the leaders and then they drop back. Some more scores. Susie Burning, three-time U.S. Open winner. This is Alice Miller at 18. And Nancy Lopez on the left. Bar for Alice Miller, and that much for a par for Nancy at 11. So Alice Miller finishes this United States Open Championship at five over. Janet Coles, putting for par here. She started the day at four under. She's now even. Mm-hmm. And remains even. Vicky Alvarez at 11. This goes in, it's birdie. Oh. So far for Vicky Alvarez. Main at two under. Which is four strokes behind the leader, Kathy Baker. This is Amicaponi, Danielle Amicaponi, and this putt will keep her as the low amateur. She's fighting it out with Kathleen McCarthy. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's a one-stroke edge for Amicaponi in the race for low amateur. She's one ahead of uh, McCarthy at the moment. Now Lopez for her par. Safely in for Nancy Lopez, but she is five shots behind the leader, who at the moment is Kathy Baker, and we'll be back. You are most welcome back here to Baltimore, and here's Kathy Baker leading the way, still at six under par, being chased by Judy Clark, and they really are making a two-horse race of it. All these great names are there, but they're four, five, six, seven strokes behind, and so it's not going to be their year to win this great title. Here's Kathy Baker at the 11th. Third shot, long par five. And not bad, could have been a lot worse. She's just, the machinery has just creaked a little bit at nine and 10, but she's still in the lead. Here's Judy Clark. Judy Clark doesn't look to be lying too bad. A little fluffy. Bob, uh, the grass is all dried out. No flyers, likely? I don't believe so, Peter. I think she's got a pretty good line coming in from the left-hand side with the hole cut to the right. It's ideal. It's going to have to go a little. Came out left. Really, uh, it jumped a little more than I thought it would, I'll tell you that. Well, it really flew and bounced and spun and gone through the green. Here's Janet Coles. Even par now. 13th, second shot, and that's a good bounce, you see, a good bounce forward, a good little grip, good little stop, and a 15-footer for a birdie. You can strike the ball as well as you like, but you can't legislate whether it's going to stop, bite, go on. That's the little bit of luck in the game that people try to tell you isn't there, but believe me, it is. 
Ricky Alvarez down on the 12th. Playing with Judy. Now, Judy, you've been with him. Let's have a report and see what you, what do you think about things. Now, Peter, Vicky has a problem right now. Uh, she's in the rough. Her lie is not a problem, but she really is going to have to move the ball left to right to avoid the tree that's right in front of her. The branches overhang. And I would think she has to start the ball almost at the left bunker. It, Lopez gives the impression of being slightly dejected. Nothing's happening for it. Do you get that feeling? Well, I do, and I think one thing that hasn't been mentioned is Nancy has been a contender now for the last six or seven tournaments and has really not played a poor round in that time. And it may be that just physically and mentally uh, she has worn out. Yeah, she had the good run. <laughs> it's always nice to have a good run, but the bad, at the bad, wrong time for this championship, maybe. Well, that's true. Vicky Alvarez, and she's hit it out left. Has it cut enough? No, I caught the bunker. Nearly a very good shot. But for those aficionados at home, they'll be fascinated, I'm sure, watching these players plot their way around. Here's Judy Clark, third, fourth shot. And a very good one, too. Remember this, par five. So that small putt there to keep her at five under. Nancy Lopez, 12th hole. She's really driven the ball beautifully today compared to the last two days. Just not happening though, Judy. She's she's putting the, you know, the ball is going 20, 25, 30 feet away instead of the eight, nine, 10 feet that she wants to really be able to sort of chase those birdies. It's just one of those things that we've all seen happen so often, isn't it? I think Nancy is beginning to see the holes run out. Um, and when your hopes are very high for winning a US Open, obviously you, you have to feel down and dejected. But she is the type of player that I really don't think will quit until it's over. Well, here's a young lady here, Kathy Baker. This to go seven under par. Oh, that was a lovely stroke and a very important putt. She had a chance at the ninth. She missed a shortish putt at the tenth, and now she's just got that one at the right moment. A lovely high wristed putting stroke, smooth as a whistle. Beautiful stroke, right into the hole. Let's have a look at it again. Easy stroke back through, good long follow through. Right in. Picture of health and vitality and all things good. Now, Judy Clark. Come on, Judy, get this one in for your par. Kathy Baker is playing alongside her. Got her birdie. Oh, oh yes, yeah. well done. If she'd missed that, she would have suddenly been three strokes behind. But no, she stays at five under, keeping a good round going. Nice view of the green and... Uh, scalloped bunkers as we find Janet Coles. Put for a birdie. And that could be. Oh, it's all beginning to happen again. Oh, all the heroines are riding hard today, the firing of their guns on all cylinders. Terrific stuff. She goes to one under. Catches Lopez. T, Kathy Baker. And you see that the, the tempo and the balance and the rhythm of this girl's swing at this moment in this championship, which is her biggest test so far, is really delight. A delight to watch. Now just watch the different tempo of Judy Clark's swing. Swing. It's brisk, it's busy, it's active, it's lively. Really spanks through the ball, picks up the tee quickly, 
that usually means that it's not a bad driver. She's a bit tight up the left side, but she got a rather nice little kick out. And although she's coming back over the corner there, this is uh, Vicky Alvarez, but this is for a par. She was plugged in the bunker and a very good effort, but that's a stroke dropped. And so she will go back to one under. Have a look at this one again. This is uh, Kathy Baker. See a lovely setup. Looks so comfortable. Arms and club all in one piece, but rather straight, I suppose you might say, but it's comfortable. Now she draws it straight back. Look how she keeps the head still. It's almost like a windmill. Her body is the, the windmill and the club, the, the sails of the windmill. Lovely position there. A letter K with the legs. Down goes the left heel, cracks it through. No sliding and slipping away, a nicely poised and balanced, lovely swing of youth. Nancy Lopez, desperate for a putt. 12th green. Long putt again for a birdie. dribbles off again is it an omen I wonder Kathy Baker the only player to score a birdie on the 11th today par 5 11th Kathy Baker the only one to get a four and she leads by two and they're getting ever closer to the clubhouse but much can happen yet Alvarez. This for a one over. <laughs> Safely in. And the very upright putting style seems to be in vogue at the moment. That's her husband looking on, anxious, oh, wiping the beads of perspiration away. Nancy Lopez for her part to stay one under and six behind the championship leader, Kathy Baker. <laughs> In, but it's only a par when it's birdie she needs. Now back through the shadows, down the fairway. We find the final group. Kathy Baker, Judy Clark. This is a shot she doesn't want to get too cute with, Peter. It's downwind and the hole is cut not too far back in the green. She certainly doesn't want to put it in that front bunker. Anything past the hole uh, would be pretty good. Middle of the green, Bob, eh? She's two strokes ahead. If you uh, think it out like a chess puzzle, uh, this is one of those where it's middle of the green, two putts and walk onto the next tee. And fairways and greens now, Peter. Absolutely. See that upright style, club and arms almost in one line. Oh, 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 oh. she struck that beautifully. Not a flinch, not, she only just stumbled a little bit round about nine and 10, but nine was a putt which she didn't strike as confidently as she had. And 10 was a slight misjudgment from the tee and a, Awkward little chip and a short putt missed, but she's back in the groove. And this girl's chasing her, though. Judy Clark. Also a difficult shot. She has a slightly downhill lie, and Judy does not hit the ball real high in the air. She's more of a driving player. She's going to have a little problem stopping this ball, I think, up over the bunker. What was it, Bob? About eight iron? Eight, nine? Seven, eight? Seven, eight I would think it's just a nine iron. Yeah. Oh. oh, tried to feather it in tight and pitch okay, straight in the bunker. And it'll be a lottery as to whether that is buried or lying all right. So it's Kathy Baker leading the way. 
by two over Judy Club. The bunker shot of Judy Clark a moment ago. And what a bunker shot it was. Reminiscent of Andy North in the last round of the U.S. Open in the month of June. Remember, he was bunkered time after time in the final round. And it was the saves from the bunkers that gave him the championship. Now, Judy has done this twice in recent holes. Well, she tapped that one in for a par, just as she did previously. So she hangs right there. With, without those two shots, Dave, she'd almost be out of it. Well, now. actually, she played three very fine bunker shots. And yep. a lot's been said about Gardner Dickinson being her teacher. And if there's one thing he can really do, it's make you know how to play bunker shots. Oh, really? Oh, yes. I must very visit with good. him. <laughs> At length. Kathy Baker. This is for the birdie. Go. Roll ball. Well, it just finally did make the right distance with just a touch to the left. That so that'll keep her with a two-stroke lead at the age of 24, Kathy Baker. Rhonda Glenn had a chance to visit with her earlier about what it would mean to her to win the United States Open. Um, I would love to win this, and especially it would be a first for me, and I, I've been getting closer and closer all the time, but I think for everybody, you know, the, winning the U.S. Open would be a real big one, but um, for me, you know, being out here and everything else, I, I look at my golf game as just an opportunity for me to glorify God, really, and that would be just a real neat thing for me to be able to do. Kathy Baker, that statement on what it would mean to her, when she said to win this one would be important, to win one. Well, she's, that's a, because she's never won a professional golf tournament. It was twice low amateur, remember, in this U.S. Open, but well down the line, not near to winning the tournament itself. Only one amateur has ever won this, Catherine Lacoste of France back in the 60s. Well, here she is on the 13th hole. Par four, 350 yards. There have been some pretty good players whose first tournament victory was a national open. Namely, Lee Trevino and Jack Nicklaus, their first professional tournaments were the National True. Open, and they went on to be something, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. I think you can back that up. Gee, she has just been so consistent and solid all the way around today. She's looking better and better now. She yep. has really got a lot of confidence. There's not any hesitation or trying to guide the ball down there. It's a good, free, full swing. Judy Clark. Only these two women have played extremely well today. Everybody else among the leaders has been falling back, falling back. Judy Clark has held fast. She's even par for the day. It's not been quite good enough to this point because Kathy Baker's won't wonder. That's good and solid too. Yep. Oh, solid but catching the rough. And that and is not going to be in a good place. What is that by, Bob? There's something, is it a man? Like it looked like a manhole cover or something. Well, I don't think that's going to have any effect on the shot, but it's mm -hmm. going to be How? downwind out of the rough and have to carry it over the bunker. Is that a great, can you tell, Rossi? Well, I'm not quite to the ball yet, so yeah. I really can't tell. I just want to make sure, just wanted to make sure it couldn't interfere with her stance. She'd get relief. At the 18th hole, meanwhile, we have Pat Bradley, a former champion, finishing up. Five over par. Trying to make this final putt. Pat Bradley, one-time ski instructor up in New England. Still an expert skier and expert golfer. Five over for this year's Open Championship. Now, on the 13th green, we have Vicky Alvarez and Nancy Lopez. Now, they've been playing very slowly, and USGA officials have been timing them. There's an actual formula for when you will be penalized. Frank Hannigan, anything new on that situation? Or? It is a 45-second 40, drill out 
for a shot theoretically, right? Well, yeah, they're told, they were told that they would both be timed uh, once they fell more than one hole behind the group in front of them. And then the timing procedure started that, uh, at that point. And mm. P.J. Boatwright times each stroke, and if they take more than 45 seconds, that's one strike against them. The sixth strike mm -hmm. is a two-stroke penalty. Okay. We'll stay up to date for on that situation. Uh, Frank, for both players, or for, uh, is there, could it be for both or just one, maybe? In this case, it's both players. The Frank we're speaking to, introduced earlier is Frank Hannigan, the senior executive director of the USGA, and our rules and other things maven here on the 18th tower. <laughs> okay, for Vicky. Remaining at one under, six shots out of the lead. There it is, as we said, only Baker and Clark have held fast today. Baker one under for the day with a two-stroke lead over Clark, who was even par for this final round. But then Lopez, you see, way well back there, along with Alvarez, Janet Coles. Good gallery beginning to gather almost entirely around these last two groups now. Uh, another good gallery waiting already up here. I still can't get over this business of, of Judy having had a 13 handicap only seven or eight years ago, Rhonda. She got a late start. I think she played golf for fun, basically, at first, yeah. like a lot of us do, but uh, obviously had the ability. Went to Gardner Dickinson, took those lessons, began to play better, and one day she went to Gardner and said, I'm going after my card. And he said, <laughs> what card? <laughs> and she got her card, and here she is. Yeah, well, here is Kathy Baker right now. We were speaking for a moment there about Judy Clark. Shot of about 100 yards going downwind. Although the uh, hole is cut deep in the green, she should be able to stop it all right. Mm -hmm. oh. Boy, watch way Boy, like that. Look out for that one. And finally, she shows her first real sign of shaking at all today. I don't, can't see whether, that, I think it's in the bunker. Yeah, that is in the bunker. She has caught the, let's see now, if she can respond to that sort of pressure and make the kind of bunker shots that Judy Clark has been making. And well, this helps Judy's shot somewhat, I would think, if only mentally. Uh, Rossi, what, uh, does she have a big problem there on the left side? Well, it's just a matter of whether she can stop it. I think she can hit it where she can stop it in the back fringe without any problem at all. You figured out what that little thing is in front of her? Is yes, it? it's a water control uh, top. Oh, yeah. Box. Okay. It's going to have to sit. Mm -hmm. So, one of the leaders has been short in the bunker and the other over the green into the short rough. Has room to work with it, though, as you can see. Of the two, you would think she'd have the slight edge here, but... We'll see. Well, we'll get to see how Kathy is out of uh, bunkers. That's, We've that's seen it. Judy is a hmm. sand trap slicker, so we'll <laughs> check out what Kathy can do. Jim, you know, Kathy Baker turned professional the same time that Julie Ingster did. Julie was somewhat the more heralded player, but Kathy was a great amateur, too, and a lot of people expected great things from her. Julie Ingster won a number of tournaments in a big way, and this is Kathy's first real go for it, and it's really nice to see her. I know she maybe suffered by comparison to Julie Ingster for a while, but they're both super players. All right. Concentrate on Kathy. So, let's set it up here. Dave, she's got a um, not too good a lie, it doesn't look like. I don't know what her stance is going to be. The lie looks okay, but let's just see what the stance is. Yeah. No, she looks okay there now, but uh, there's not much room between uh, her and the hole there. Just take a little light grip and feel like about how hard you throw it underhanded. Nice full swing. She stopped it there. Look at that shot. Ooh. She's pretty good out of bunkers, too. <laughs> pretty good. But she'll have a little concentrating to do on the putt for the par. Good look at the attractive young lady from Clover, South Carolina. Now it'll be Judy Clark's turn from off the green. Try to get close for the par.
Certainly the magazine's covers would be after Kathy Baker should she win this championship. You saw a good long shot of her face right there. Very attractive person, visually and, and, and otherwise. Uh, when, when a woman wins the Open, does it generally mean as much to her? You, the two of you might respond to this as, as it does to a man. Well, it certainly can, Jim. Of course, uh, either one of these two are, are both nice-looking ladies. And uh, as we watch Judy get ready to play her shot, finish that statement. But the thing is, you have to work after you've won the tournament. It doesn't mean that they're going to knock your doors down and just keep offering you money. Anyhow, you, you have to have a certain personality. You want to be a little outgoing and uh, be able to mix well with people. That's something I know Judy Clark does. I've done a lot of outings with her and been around her quite a bit. I haven't been around Kathy Baker that much, but just looking at her, I mean, she looks like the kind of person you'd want to be around if you were entertaining customers or advertising clothes or or those pants she had on the first two or three days that she'd want her to do it. <laughs> She's very personable too, David. The thing you also have to do though, once you win the Open, is you have to keep winning because they'll remember you for about a year and then you have to keep on winning if she wants to continue to get endorsements like that. You have that. to do both. You have to win and sell yourself too. If you're too much of an introvert, you're, you're just gonna be around once. But point number one is this. You gotta make putts like this. Yeah, you gotta win first. Putts of all lengths. Well, look at that. Look at that. Oh, what a big stroke that was. You'd think she'd won about four opens to see the way this young woman is responding to the pressure here. Still with a two-stroke lead, and now it goes over to Judy Clark. Interesting, I think, that the, uh, the biggest amateur title that Judy Clark ever won was the New Jersey State Amateur. She played here for a number of years, and she played this course a good many times. I wonder if that could have been a help to her this week. If she's played here a lot of times, yeah. I'm sure it is a big help to her because then she would know a lot more or have a lot more local knowledge about the upper course. But that doesn't do you any good now. <laughs> Just well, if she doesn't make this, she drops three strokes behind. Then that'll be tough. Stays right there. Just that slender two-stroke lead. Stay with us. We'll be back. Welcome back to Ball of Straw, and especially here to the 14th tee in the final round of the Women's Open. With Kathy Baker on the left leading by two strokes over Judy Clark on the right. And it has become now a two-way fight as we go down to the stretch. This is a very good hole, Jack. It says 366, but it plays much longer because it's going right straight up the hill against the mountain uh, side of the upper course. Uh, the bunkers to the left are in play that you see, and just past them there's a valley where the players' drives usually wind up, and you don't want to be too far right. Well, she looks like she's hit it left. Ooh, that's into in the that rough. bunker. Yeah, is it then bunker, Ross? Well, I couldn't tell if it caught the bunker. It, it bounced backwards, yeah. actually, but that bunker is really not in place, so she must have whiffed the, the drive, because uh, that bunker is probably only 160 yards off the tee. Judy Clark, a slight opening of the door. The idea, Jack, just keep swinging the way you're doing. Don't don't think mm -hmm. about what Kathy's done. You've got to do what Judy does. Oh, that's a beautiful drive right up the middle and long. So so she's giving up about uh, 50 yards a hole to Judy Clark when both of them hit it. So uh, coming down the stretch, even though all the holes are downwind, it's going to make a big difference. This is Okamata at the 18th green. He is plus two on the tournament. Never could quite mount a charge. He started to and would fall back. I say she's a very good player, Jack, and she's been playing uh, with some pain. She's had a bad back and, and really had serious problems with it. I don't know how she's done as well as she has with a bad back. 
Great natural player, David. Great natural swing. Uh, that, that doesn't help you when your back hurts. <laughs> <laughs> So she finished this tournament at 2 0. They round 71 for Ayako Okamoto. Now, Bob Rosberg, a report. The ball, the ball carried over the bunker, Jack, and jumped back in it, and it had, it's really in a kind of a peculiar lie. It's not a real bad lie, but it's a lie that she has no chance to get it anywhere near the green. If she hits a real good shot, she can get it within 50 yards, possibly. But I would look for the shot to come out perhaps 100 yards to the short of the green. Don't think she has any chance to get home at all. All right, drama here at the 14th hole. Kathy Baker leading Judy Clark by two strokes. And you just heard her situation as we wait for this middle age migration, population migration here to cross the fairway now David it does not look good that lip is fairly high and as Rossi's already pointed out you can't get greedy she has the chance to go ahead and lose a stroke and unless Judy Clark were to birdie she's still going to be leading at this point you've got to try to relax as much as you can and play the percentage make sure first that you get out of the bunker don't get too cute and leave it in the bunker Just play for five or at least get on the green in three and maybe give yourself a chance to make a putt for a, a par. But as you said, the first step is let's get out of here safely. First thing, first things first, Jack. Mm -hmm. Worry about the green. Next shot. That's a good shot. That's up about 80 or 90 yards short of the green. Really an excellent shot under the conditions. That's right, right, right on the same level, too. It's over that little slope that uh, Judy Clark's in. How about Judy? She's in pretty good shape, Rossi. Hmm? Oh, she's hit a beautiful drive. Uh, she's got a slightly uphill lie, and uh, it'll be tough to see the bottom of the pin, but she can uh, see the pin. She's driven it far enough where she can see where she's going. But this is a tough hole. It's all carry and up against the wind, shooting off an uphill lie into the wind. So every, all of those conditions make the hole play a little longer. It's really a great short par four. Yes. Because it doesn't play so short. <laughs> that's right. I think this hole has given the girls as much trouble as uh, any hole in the golf course, David. Judy checking her yardage. As we move to the 15th tee and Nancy Lopez, par three. Well, straight at it, but yeah. uh, once again, still going at 25, 30 feet by. Judy Clark, second shot, 14th. Oh, good looking shot. Well, we were saying how long the hole played. Maybe she had one club. Ball well, still moving back. Yeah. Here we go. Drove it in there, kind of, David, and it uh, didn't get up in the wind at all. I believe that was a five iron she hit. Now at the 15th tee, Vicky Alvarez. Carry. Go. Is that the bunker, Judy? I believe so. I'm on the other side of the green, but I think she buried it in the trap. I'm going to go take a look. Okay. Alvarez and Lopez playing the 15th, and Vicky, we are told, is indeed in the bunker. Three over for today. Nancy, four over for the day. Here's the leader, third shot at the par four, 14th. Say about 80 yards, Russ. This is a shot of about 80 yards, David. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> Ooh, what a shot. <laughs> Is what that a... any good, fellas? Ladies? Well, she got up and down so beautifully at the 13th. And has a chance to do the same thing here. Well, other scores for you. Well, tonight ABC Sports will present live primetime coverage of the third USFL championship game. The defending champion Baltimore Stars returning to the final game for the third straight year, this time against the Oakland Invaders with the USFL's best record, 15-4-1. From nearby Meadowlands tonight here on ABC. Action begins live at 8 Eastern only on ABC Sports. <laughs> Rossi, who do you like in that game tonight? Well, I tell you, I think Baltimore's come a long ways this year. They didn't get off to a very good start, but I think with Fusina really coming along now, uh, they're going to be tough to beat. But uh, I tell you, A. Bear and Carter are really a great combination for Oakland, and they can score. All right. Said Jay or Lanel A. Bear. You talk, <laughs> we're talking about golf. I think it's a combination. <laughs> Mr. Bobby A. Bear, maybe going on to bigger things. Here's Vicky Alvarez, just out of the trap, really. Hmm? Would you rather be in the sand or there? I'd rather be in the bunker mm -hmm. myself. I know the consistency of the sand. I've, I've been in it enough all week. Uh, these lies give everyone a little bit of trouble. Unless your name is Alvarez, and then you can play it. Lovely touch, Vicky. Lovely. Vicky, one under at the moment. Now Judy Clark at the 14th. Big putt here, Jack. Now, if she were to make this, that would really put some pressure on Kathy to have to make hers to keep the lead. In the shadow all the way. Work out. No. Good attempt, though. Good, good stroke. Yep. Good, good speed. Good everything. Nothing this tentative about that stroke. That's more like it. Now, former champion Janet Anderson for par at 18, and yes. She had a very rocky day. She started at two over and she finishes, as you see, at eight over. Now the leader at the moment for par at 14 to stay at seven under. That was a little soft, wasn't that it? That was a little tentative yep. through the tentative. ball. It wasn't as as uh, piston-like as, as the one she uh, made at the last hole. It looked like she hit two yes. and then remembered to follow through. Yeah. But a four there would have been a, a small miracle, and a five after the bad drive, if she makes this putt, was really what that's what bunkering is for, to penalize you if you hit an errant shot. There it is. That was firm enough. A bogey to drop her to six, and Judy Clark trails now by one, and Judy has been so steady. <laughs> and once again, I say, Jack, if she makes this for her par and gets within a shot, then she walks up to that par three with the honor. Yeah. If you were to hit a very good shot there at the short hole, number 15, change the complexion of this tournament. It's a nasty little distance, isn't it? <laughs> Especially at our age, Jack. All right. So she will have the honor now. 
And the next hole, the 15th, is a par three. 136 from an elevated tee. Trap marvelously. I think the pin's in a pretty hard place, too, to get close. I mean, you have to have absolutely the right club. It's just over the bunkers on the left-hand side. So, Kathy Baker at six under, Judy Clark at five under as they approach the 15th tee. That's exactly how they started today, six under and five under. Everybody else has fallen back. Other scores. Amakapani at eight over. Amateur. Here's Kathy Baker's card. Birdies are in red. And the bogey at the last hole. Three birdies, three bogeys. And it's ten. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even Steven. And at the 18th, we have Amy Alcott on the left and Danielle Amakapani. And this young lady, Danielle Amakapani from Phoenix, has to par this hole to be the low amateur in this woman's open as Kathy Baker was twice before. Now we're at 15. Judy Clark with the honor. It's almost become match play now. Good looking shot. That is a good shot. Mm -hmm. Hard to get that ball closer. And Rossi, it doesn't look like there's a lot of green there. Well, I'll tell you, right uh, over the, the front fringe, it goes away a little and then comes abruptly up the hill. And I think you have to carry the ball almost by the flag, Dave. If you carry it a little short, it's going to take one big bounce pass. But Judy's ball is only about 15 feet from the hole. Much wind there. Kathy was throwing some grass up, but the flag doesn't look like it's moving very much. The flag is absolutely limp. There's a little wind, uh, and I believe it would be coming out of the right, but I don't think it's going to bother the shot one way or the other. It gets a little protected by those trees down the right side, doesn't yes. it? Yes, it's just starting to gust a little now out of the right. Right at it. Hmm. I'll say. <laughs> All right, don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. The battle is joined. Kathy Baker, Judy Clark, and we'll be back. Welcome back. That's how they stand. Kathy Baker by one over Judy Clark, and the rest trailing in their wake as we look at the 15th green. And it'll be Judy Clark to putt first. And a good crowd watching on this uh, very hot and humid day. Holes running out. Only three and this bit of putting to go. Before there could be a new champion. Judy Clark for a birdie two. This to go six under par. Give her a three. The youngest winner of this championship was in fact uh, an amateur, Catherine Lacoste from France, who was just 22. Eight. Here is the low amateur this year. This is to tie as low amateur with Kathleen McCarthy. This is Danielle Amakapani. Steady, steady, in it goes. And a little, perhaps, disappointment, and not a million miles away from a tear, I suspect. 
Nine over par, ties for low amateur with Kathleen McCarthy. And back to the major action. As I said, the youngest person to win was Kathleen Lacoste from France. An amateur, 22 years and five days. That was in 1967. Then ten years later, the youngest professional was Hollis Stacy, who was then just 23 and four months. Kathy Baker to go seven under par. Sweet as a nut, that was back and through and in and a rapier-like stroke from Kathy Baker, who really does look relaxed and happy as if she's actually enjoying it. And there we are, here's the 18th green, and sadly a missed putt there from Amy Olcott. One of the great ladies on the tour. <laughs> Finishes with a round of 74, four over par. Not Amy's turn this year, but still a little smile. Good companion, Amy. 16th hole now, 390 yards. Par four, bunkers left, and tree. There's one tree that sticks out a bit on the right. So although the driving area looks very generous and wide, it actually isn't, because you can catch those bunkers on the left and that tree down there on the right, that lone big old pine can catch you. You can get behind that to block your view. So two ahead, only three holes to go. And their pars are four, five and four. Swing got a little bit flat. She got inside and then came over the top on a couple of shots and uh, miscued them rather badly. But that's okay. She's got her blow in first down the fairway. Uh, the pressure back on Judy Clark. She's got to hit a good drive now. past Kathy Bakers who's been totally outgunned from the tee by Judy Clark but she's kept the ball in play and she's hold the crucial putts and there she is two ahead don't go far away lots are gonna happen it's almost 530 of a hot summer afternoon here at the Baltusrol Golf Club in New Jersey and Kathy Baker holds that two-shot lead over Judy Clark in the US Women's Open Golf Championship one of those two women is going to have the word never erased from her official biographical sketch because neither one of them has ever won a professional tournament. This is Jane Geddes. At 18, her fourth shot on the par four hole, so she'll have trouble making a bogey five here. Jane, even par, coming to this hole and actually in a tie for fourth place. And two under for the day, which was a real yeah. good round, but she had a bad drive to the right and then out to the bunker and over the green and not a way you want to finish. She'll drop down at least then to one over, which would put her in a tie with Sally Little and Penny Pulse at the moment. Sally Little has not finished yet. Now Kathy Baker, 16th hole. She didn't catch the bunker on the left. She's not behind the tree on the right. She has a good shot at that flag stick. Well, that flag stick is not too far on that green. If you're going to get close, which okay, she's got it. Look, two shot lead, you know, let's favor the left side a little bit. And she's got to make Judy try to make the birdies. As Rossi said earlier, this is strictly fairways and greens for her. If she can go four, five, four, that's, I'd say that's all she has to do. Mm. That's what she's got in front of her. I think she wants to get it up that bank, David. She yeah. doesn't want to leave it on that bank and let it trickle back off the green. I tell you, she's got to get it going, though. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, yeah. What a shot. Look at this. As I said, I mean, she's got to bail out to the left. <laughs> well, that's you can get out the cake now and have the icing in the bowl, but don't quite take that's that knife to spread it out. 
Yeah. She makes that. If she makes that, she'll be on her way, it appears. Never won a pro tournament. Imagine that. Jim Hand of the USGA, the president walking behind there. It's a good way to play it safe, David. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ross. Mm. Uh, just taking some heat off of you, Ross. Judy Clark. What consistent golf she has played. She bogeyed the fourth hole, birdied the fifth. She has parred every other hole in the golf course. Yeah, you see it right there from the other angle. The that one may that, come back. That may come back, though, Jim. Yep. What? See that yep. hill that Bob was talking about? Here it comes. Still moving. Picking up speed. The principle of Fletcher's trolley in operation. Principle of physics. That we look at that. It's not too bad. So. Well, that shows you what a good shot Kathy Baker hit to put it in there that close. Now, Jane Geddes made, trying to make the six here. That's a double bogey six. It'll drop over two over par for the championship. Even par for the day. Just the time she was two under. That's a, that's good a good tournament. round, but uh, you know, not a way you'd want to finish, obviously. Drops her down with the Yako Okamoto and Betsy King at two over par. Now, Jan Stevenson. Jan. Stevenson, who is five over for the championship, three over for the day. Seventy-five today for Jan Stevenson, the Australian long resident in the United States. Now. One of the glamour girls of the tour. Jim, we're seeing something new here today, and I've noticed it all week. We're seeing some players who are moving into their games and, and coming into the, the peak of their playing ability. They started in Frank Hannigan's Junior Girls program, which he has promoted so successfully for many years. He's been our, our patron of junior girl golfers. They've come up through the Title IX scholarship programs. Girls like Kathy Baker, Nancy Lopez, Janet Coles, Betsy King, all of them getting scholarships, and now they're going to dominate women's golf. This is another look at Kathy Baker's shot, which may, may wrap it up. Look at that. Had to get up on that plateau, past that little hill, or else it might have done what Judy Clark's did, come back all the way over to the green. Now live, and you see where Judy did end up. Third shot on the par four hole. Nope, nope, and she's got a tough one for the par now. Well, doggone it, she's left it. She may still be outside of Kathy Baker. Yeah. We'll see. There it is, the two-shot lead that could become at least three very shortly here. Notice that there are only three under par in this championship. The golf course, in the end, has fought back, as so often happens in the Open. Yesterday, they were tearing it apart at 65, a 68. Other rounds under par, but not on this day. Judy Clark here is even par. Kathy Baker is one under. And just about everybody else has given up. I surrender, Baltus roll. Uh, if Judy doesn't make this, then that's um, maybe it. But most of the players felt that uh, even par would uh, be good enough to win the tournament. And uh, it looks like if Kathy just finishes like she is, it'd be 281. That's a fine score anywhere. Amen. That'll be a bogey five. The lead will go at least to three strokes. If Kathy makes this putt, it'll be four strokes with two holes to play. And Judy knows that. Um, see her looking there. You know that it's uh, tough to do when you're two shots back and your opponent knocks it in there stiff like this, and you've got to try to play a shot of the same type, make it run up that hill, and she just didn't quite make it. Kathy certainly had the opportunity to shake there a little so ago, but she didn't. She came right back again, and that's the test of a champion. It's when you win championships. You, just as she finished yesterday when she made a bogey at 17 and backed it up with a birdie right away at 18. And she, 
Logan 14, birdie 15 right away, and now short birdie putt at 16. All right. So the lead will go to four strokes. Kathy Baker, eight under for the championship. Two under for the day. Not backing in in any sense. Going out to win the U.S. Open. And now, of course, Judy must finish up this for the bogey five. And so we have four-stroke lead for Kathy Baker. There are still two holes left to play. These are the two fighting it out. The leader by four at the 17th tee. Driving home in a limousine now with a four-stroke lead. This finds the rough on the right side. <laughs> Much can happen in two holes, but the way Kathy has been playing. It's really not too bad, Jack. She definitely didn't want to fool with the bunker on the left. And she can lay it up to those cross bunkers down the fairway and have a shot of about 120 yards into the green. Now, Judy has just got to keep herself together, too, doesn't she, Dave? She has to just say, okay. At this point, she, she can't be thinking about winning too much. I mean, she'd have to bury the last two holes and hope something happened to Kathy. But what she wants to do now is, you know, no worse than, say, par par and, and get second. That would be 284, I'm sure, at the first part of the week. That would have been, uh, look, <laughs> look at this playoff going on. Oh, Mark oh. Weave has won on the first playoff hole beating John Mahaffey at the Williamsburg, Virginia in the PGA Tour, the men's. <clears throat> now at the 18th green, this is Sally Little. She's even par, and this was her one over. And for birdie to play even. All right, Sally. Seventeen, Nancy Lopez, who is now at even par. It's her third shot at the par five. As only three players are under par at this moment. I think uh, Jack Judy Rankin made a, a maybe a good observation about Nancy's streak, playing so many good rounds in a row and the pressure and so forth. And there is there does come a time, no matter how well you play, that you just sort of wear out and you're nerves give out I think that was true of Alice Miller here this week too she's she's been up there so often the last two weeks she hasn't played as well as she would played the first uh, well in every tournament so far this year well, here's a fresh new face with matching earrings wonder if that would help her swings huh <laughs> you gonna wear earrings uh -huh. I wear anything to hit the ball like she's hitting it <laughs> Well, wait a minute. I'll get you some. <laughs> we'll tee it up tomorrow, Wingwood. Three years on the tour. Well, Bob, she's not laying up. She's got a wood out of there. Well, I think she's still laying up to the bunkers, Dave. I don't okay. think she can get to the bunkers out of that lie. up the middle of the fairway couldn't have laid it down there any better <laughs> there's you look back from the 17th green the 17th hole and we're back at the 18th now in the gallery or in the clubhouse and Janet Coles at even par tied for fourth at the moment began the day at four under Awkward little lad pitch mm. here. 
Beautiful shot. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, lovely. Well, she has that putt to finish this tournament at even par, playing with Betsy King, who is two of as we go back to the 17th and Nancy Lopez for birdie to get back into red figures. One time. Mm, I don't think she's had a birdie all day. Hard to make birdies when you're two putting every green. Been very elusive. Betsy King at the 18th. This is for birdie that would let her finish at one over. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Betsy will finish tied with Okamoto and Jane Geddes at two over. She just got out to such a bad start there. It was four over the first uh, seven holes. She hung right in there and, and, you know, turned up what could have been a round of 80 or so if you gave up into a respectable finishing round. Now, Vicky Alvarez is at one under. Oh. And that slips away for her and she has that left for a bogey. Janet Coles to finish out with par. Yes, and her tournament score even par. 288 for Janet Coles. Well, I'm impressed with her. She was looked like she was hitting the ball real well when we were down to oh, practice tee, yes. Jack. Good swing, good solid move through the ball. Score is 10th. And the venerable clubhouse, Baldus Roll. Back at 17, Nancy Lopez for par. in and she remains even which is at the moment a tie for third place. Okay. Kathy Baker with a four stroke lead over Judy Clark her third shot here at 17. Very characteristic of her to stand directly behind the ball with her holding her club like that. Help her get lined up. Fairways and greens. Another good shot. I uh -huh. thought that's what you might do at the last hole. Just get the fat part of the green, but that's good. All right, you're looking at the leader by four strokes as she strides the 17th green and will be back in just a moment. And it's all hubbling and bubbling here. Kathy Baker at minus eight. Eight under par, four strokes ahead of Judy Clark. With just a couple of holes to go. And this was Judy Clark. Playing a third shot to the par five, 17th hole. And just watch this. Looks as if it might just oblige, but dies seven or eight inches from the hole. She just went up and tapped that in for her birdie to put her stroke nearer to five under. But now here, back live is Kathy Baker, the championship leader, with this putt for a birdie to go nine under par. Pat Bradley incidentally won uh, in 1981 on a par 72 course at uh, minus nine which is the best record ever done for a par 72 course. So can Kathy Baker hold this? Put it a nine under if she can. <coughs> what a great effort. 
raced it by a bit and now she wishes it was two foot nearer but never mind it's a delight to see somebody inexperienced going along controlling the nerves with a smile on their face and actually looking as if they're enjoying the challenge and come what may I'm delighted to be here and more power to her elbow this for her par this to stay eight under and at this moment quite a crucial putt for her it's gone three three and a half feet by doesn't want to miss this all the way sweet as a nut well hold well the USGA do so much with the RNA in the world of golf a message from them to cheer you on your way Vicky Alvarez about to hit her second shot on the home hole. Par four, 380 yard, 18th at the Baldus Roll Golf Club, upper course. Playing in the companionship of Nancy Lopez today. Neither one has had an outstanding round. Vicky is four over for the day. Nancy is five over. And a bounce. Bounce right. Okay, bounces on the green. Very fine shot. Excellent. Beautiful shot off the downhill line, Jim. Carried it in there nice and high with the left to right, just the way you, you envision the shot should be played. Vicky at five feet one, having a wonderful United States Open nonetheless. At even par, there are only two women under par now. They have dropped by the wayside in their battle with par one by one, and only Baker and Clark are under par at this point. Nancy Lopez outdrove Judy Alvarez by a good 20, 30 yards there, but that is normal. Nancy is a long player, but her putter has betrayed her on this day. She has yet to win her first United States Open. Oh, that one. However, let's see. Pretty hot coming through there, but you know, it'll stay well on the green. So Lopez and Alvarez are on on 18 as the gallery begins to all gather around this final hole. Look at them streaming on either side. We go back to the tee. Two, I think we can say now, escort Kathy Baker home. First, let's get these tee shots done, however. Yeah, we, <laughs> there's a lot of trouble here. If, uh, yeah. I haven't seen a lot of uh, drives in the woods here, but I've seen a couple there where Jane Geddes yeah, made the, the right double hand. bogey by driving to the right. It's, of course, Judy Clark. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's not waving the white flag, not yet. Got in the right hand rough, yeah, though. I, uh, leaves a little bit of a difficult angle into the hole here with a good swing. Boy, she's played well today. Nancy Lopez here walking up to the 18th. She's just gotten her ovation from the crowd. She is bitterly disappointed. It's so hard to get in position to win an open, and she's tried so many times. They're the parents of Kathy Baker. <laughs> Are they proud? <laughs> Kathy shot on 18. Oh, the tee shot. Oh, Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Certainly the tee shot of a champion. Rossi, she just really maintained her composure in such an admirable way all the way today, didn't she? Well, she played just great, uh, Jim. Aside from the one bad drive she hit at 14, she really didn't hit any bad shots. Tell us the attendance today is 15,200. There have only been three rounds under par today. Chris Johnson had a 70, so did Penny Pulse, and Ayoko Okamoto had a 71. But Kathy Baker is two under par for the day there. I'm Amy Alcott, what's for the uh, women you favor because they're in alphabetical order. Daniela Macapani, they're tied for low amateur with Kathleen McCarthy. There's Jane Blaylock, the veteran at 10 over. Pat Bradley, former champion. Gerlin Britz, a former champion. Donna Capone also won this. Joanne Carner, one of the great names in the Hall of Fame of women's golf. Judy Clark, of course. And now 
Nancy Lopez with the birdie attempt on 18. Trying to get under par for the championship. It's the only ambition left to her here now for today. Hasn't had a birdie all day. And still doesn't. It's one of those mm. days that your mother told you about. Well, she'll be the mother telling about in about an hour <laughs> when she gets home to her 20-month-old daughter. Ashley. Sorry, Ashley. Moms couldn't do it today. More alphabetical scores. Marlene Floyd, sister of Ray. Ray Garbazee. Jane Geddes, who played so well today, even far around. Rosie Jones, who battled it out for the title last year, just lost. Betsy King. Sally Little, played well today. Former South African, now an American citizen. Lopez. Alice Miller, the hot lady on the tour this year. Kathleen McCarthy, remember, tying for low amateur with Amaka Pony. Honor to them. Sandra Palmer, a former winner of this tournament. Vicky Alvarez. And she's going to try this one to get under par for the championship. Plus, it would give her third place all to herself. Yeah. And so it does. A nice finish for little Vicky Alvarez, putting her in fact in solo third place behind Baker and Clark. One under for this championship, and that's that's mighty good. Vicky had rounds of 72, 69, 71, and 75 today. Nancy Lopez had 70, 70, 71, so consistent the first three rounds. But this will be for 76. 77, I should say. Seventy-seven for Nancy Lopez on the final round, which leaves only two players in the golf course and three strokes between them: Kathy Baker and Judy Clark. Her first. Let's have one more look at that putt of uh, Vicky Alvarez. Yep, no question. Right speed, right line, and that'll do it every time. Well, that was three good shots in a row. Now here is Kathy Baker. Trying to put it safely on that green one more time. Here it comes. Just what she wanted. What Just what she shot. wanted. Just right. Two putts from there for the par that'll win it for her. Her first year on tour, 1983, she was in six events and won $1,456 altogether. Last year, she was in 26 events and won $54,000. This very weekend, she's going to win $40,000. Now, Judy Clark. Five under for the championship, even par for today. And a little fast coming through there. So she will get the opportunity to show the line a bit to Kathy Baker. But the final two on the 18th green. Some more alphabetical scores. Penny Pulse there, who played well today, had an under par round of 70. Patty Sheehan, you see. Pearl Sin, an amateur. And winding them up there, the last name, Kathy Whitworth, who's still the greatest player in the history of women's golf, perhaps still has not won the U.S. Open, but is still trying. And now let's listen to it for the new U.S. Women's Open champion, Kathy Baker of South Carolina. great just to see somebody feel so good you would like everyone to have that opportunity at least once in their life that's right for some reason or other Kathy Baker 24 years old she was born in Albany New York by the way to give due credit to the Empire State but uh, it's now Clover South Carolina she will be in the Clover today <laughs> That's it. Three under par. Three women under par for this championship of the USGA. Well-conducted 
as always, and also by the, the members and committees here at Baldus Roll. And Bob Ross there, professional, he's one of the outstanding club professionals in the country. But you talked about Kathy winning $40,000 today, Jim, but the thing that stays with her long after the 40 large is gone <laughs> is that she was an open champion. Tony Monero is still remembered. He only won the one. Well, and Judy doesn't have to take any back seat here today. Either. She's played very well, even par for the day. Because people didn't give <laughs> either one of these two. <laughs> it's <laughs> terrific, well, isn't it? If you can't laugh now, you can't laugh. So but, uh, you know, everybody was talking about Lopez, and I kind of thought maybe Coles would get in there. But, yeah. boy, these two players played very, very well. Judy had rounds of 71, 75, 65 in his even par today. And no matter what happens here, she's going to finish second. That's right. She's left it a bit short. Well, she's come a long way since the 13 handicap of seven or eight years ago, I'll tell you that. I say she has. And that's a lot of hard work, too. Do people like this game or not? I mean, some of those people were sitting there when at noon today when there weren't going to be any people on the leaderboard around for hours. Right. Or there weren't even any players finishing at noon. I mean, the first tee time was 10 o'clock, so the first people to finish were about 1.30. You know the great thing about golf crowds? You never hear anybody boo on a golf course. Yeah. They, they pull for everyone. You may pull harder for a Lopez or Palmer or Nicholas or Watson or whoever your favorite is, but you, you're right. You don't hear people pull against a player. Certainly not against Kathy Baker. attention to that one. Kathy has had rounds of 70, 72, 68 yesterday, and she's two under in today's round, headed for 70 if she makes that putt. Never over par. That's that's good playing anywhere. Trying to look non-committal to allow Judy Clark the attention she deserves. Executive producer of ABC Sports, Rune Arledge. We'll try to credit some of our personnel when we have a chance not to interfere with play here. All right, Judy. Very well done. Extremely well done. Even par round of 72, 5 under for the U.S. Women's Open Championship. And they give her her due. Our producer here, Chuck Howard. Directors Jimmy Jeanette and Terry Jastro. Technical directors Wink Gunther and Gary Larkins, and now Kathy Baker. That's it. Par four for a round of 70. Two under par today, eight under par for the championship. The U.S. Women's Open Golf Champion, the national champion of 1985, is 24-year-old Kathy Baker of Clover, South Carolina. And she earned it all the way. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by the investment firm of Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. By Martin Marietta. The future is being driven by technology, and Martin Marietta is masterminding it. And by Mercury. Cars whose shapes are the result of intelligent design. Cars that have kept up with the times as much as you have. Coming up next on many of these ABC stations, ABC World News Sunday with Sam Donaldson. Be sure to join ABC Sports tonight as they present live primetime coverage of the third USFL championship game featuring the Baltimore Stars against the Oakland Invaders. That'll be live at 8 o'clock Eastern tonight. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies to Hong Kong from more top business centers.
with three-class Royal Pacific Service. The winner of the U.S. Women's Open is Kathy Baker of South Carolina. She'll have to check that card, attest to it, sign it, make sure it's right, and then it'll all be official. All of this, in fact, has been a presentation of ABC Sports.